In a previous video, I discussed the concept of annuities. Now, annuities are streams of equal payments made at equal intervals, and examples of that would be a mortgage, a car loan, pension, etc. Um, I've also discussed in previous videos the concept of a perpetuity. This is a case where you receive a constant payment forever. Now, what happens if we assume that growth can take place at some constant rate? How can we modify these two models? Now, in terms of the growing perpetuity, we've actually seen this when we value a stock. Um, the price of the stock today, time period zero, that's the subscript zero here, is equal to the dividend one period in the future divided by R, the required return, minus G, the growth rate of dividends. So if we look at an example, suppose a firm has just paid a dividend of $3 and dividends are expected to grow at a constant rate of 4% per year forever. If the, if the required return is 10%, what is the price of the stock? Well, they just paid the dividend this year, so we need to find out next period's dividend, and it's going to grow at this 4% rate, so it's going to be $3 times 1.04. And we're going to divide that by the required return, 0 0.10, minus the growth rate, uh, 0 0.04. And if we do that, we get $52. Now, if we have an annuity that's growing, okay, the perpetuity case we see a lot of because of that constant growth um, dividend model for stocks, um, we can also figure out a formula. And we have to modify the previous formula and the annuity formula that, that's been previously discussed, and we get this formula here the present value is going to be equal to the initial payment. Okay, I can't really put an A in there because it's not a constant amount. It's an initial amount. And it's going to be multiplied by what's in the brackets here. And that's going to be 1 minus 1 over 1 plus, or 1 plus G divided by 1 plus R raised to the nth power. Make sure you do this in the correct numerical sequence. 1 plus G divided by 1 plus r, and then raise it to the nth power, and then you're going to subtract that number from 1, and then divide it by r minus g. So let's look at an example. Let's find the present value of a 10-year annuity that is expected to have 3% growth and an initial uh, payment of $100, and we'll assume there's a required return of 12%. So we just plug into this formula here, the initial payment is 100, the growth rate is 3%, so 1.03 up here. The required return is 12%, so 1 plus the required return is 1.12. Divide 1.03 by 1.12 and raise it to the 10th power. And then subtract that number from 1, and then divide this whole number by 0.12 minus 0.03 and then multiply it by 100. And if you do that, you should get $630.33. We can also solve for what the initial payment is, if that's what we're interested in. So if we know what the present value is and we want to know what initial payment we need to reach that present value, we can just take the previous formula, remember the previous formula was the present value equals the initial payment times what's here, so I just divided both sides by what's in the bracket here, and I get the initial payment, um, I'm solving for the initial payment. So we can work this out and look at an example here. Suppose a growing annuity has a present value of 10,000, so we know what the present value is, um, the annuity matures in 15 years, it has a required return of 14%, and the growth rate is 6%, what was the initial payment? So we can work that out as by substituting into this formula here, and we get $1,204.36. Or if I want to say it another way, 
if I had started saving $1,204.36 and increased the amount that I put into the account each time by 6%, okay, and did that for 15 years, the present value of that at a required return of 14% would be $10,000. Okay, here's probably a more interesting case where we find the future value for a growing annuity. So even if you're not a finance person, this is something you'd be really interested in, where you want to find out how much you'll have in the future if you put in an initial amount and you increase it by um, some amount G every year. So, you know, here's a good example. So let's find the future value for uh, saved for a person who saves $5,000 initially for 20 years and increases the amount by 2% each year if she earns an 8% return. So this is sort of a classic case of someone starting their career. They can only afford to save $5,000 a year in their um, 401k but they know they're going to get some pay raises every year and every time they get a pay raise they're going to increase the amount they put in by two percent and in this case they're going to earn an eight percent return so if we substitute into that equation okay 1.08 raised to the 20th power minus 1.02 raised to the 20th power divide all of that by 0.08 minus 0.02 we get 264,584.14. Okay, I happen to work this out as just a regular annuity with no growth. If you didn't increase the amount you put in by 2% every year, you'd only have $228,809.82. So by, by um, choosing to put in a little more every year after you get a pay raise, you can increase the future value you have in your account by what looks to be 30, a little less than $36,000. Okay, pretty significant. And if you're lucky and you can increase it by more than 2% a year, maybe 3% a year, um, it would be even more significant. Okay, finally, we can solve for the initial payment. So this might be the case where we say, look, I want to have. 500,000 or I want to have a million dollars in my retirement account in 30 years or 40 years. All right. Um, I know what return I'm going to earn. I have a pretty good estimate. I'm planning to increase the amount I put in each year. Okay. How much do I have to start with? So in this example, um, 40 years from now, you'd like to have a half a million dollars in your account. You plan to deposit money every year and increase that amount by 3%. Okay, if you can earn 9%, a 9% return, what's the amount of your initial deposit? So again, substituting it to, to this equation, okay, where we just solve for the initial payment, um, we're going to get $1,065.82. So if you have a, a really modest start at the first, um, that first deposit you make, just a little bit over $1,000, but you increase it by 3% 3, 3 every year, okay, over the course of 40 years, it'll grow to a half a million dollars. So this is kind of a, a, a nice one to look at in the sense that it makes it maybe a little less daunting to understand how much it takes to, uh, to save a half a million dollars. I mean, it seems like a lot, but you can start very modestly today and increase that amount a little bit each year when you get a pay raise, and over the course of the years, it'll grow to a fairly substantial amount.